Welcome everybody, Big Mess, Mess of Branch Outdoors, and I'm going to tie for you today a Pat's Rubber Leg Stonefly, otherwise known here in the mountains in North Carolina as a girdle bug. I am going to be tying this on a jig style hook with a tungsten bead with a little modification. Hope you folks like it. Let's get to tying. First thing I'm going to do is I want to take a Hannock size 10 jig hook with a 4.6 slotted tungsten bead in silver. Insert that into my Norvice fly tie-in system, American made. Get that set just right. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Norvice auto bobbin and I'm going to get a thread base started on this particular hook here. The next material that I'm going to grab will be some flexi floss and the color brown. Tie this in many colors. I'm going to double the material over. I'm going to capture that in my thread and I'm going to tie in the tail first. I'm going to pull this up over the top to give me an idea in the size and I'm going to trim that. The next material I'm going to use will be some copper brown speckled chenille. Tie this in many different colors. Coffee black is a very popular one. Black, green uh, with yellow, yellow olivish color is another good one as well. But the sky's the limit. You tie these to match the particular bugs that you have in your neck of the woods. Next, I'm going to take some rubber and I'm going to tie in three sets of legs. Due to the fact that we have this slotted tungsten bead, I prefer to do it that particular method. Spin thread counterclockwise to make the thread jump backwards. And we're going to capture that just like so. I like to make some crisscrossing wraps just like this to secure it in. Placement on the hook shank is not as important as we make it out to be sometimes. We just want some movement in the water. Take set number two. And then we're going to do set number three. And we are almost done. Locked in, half hitch. And then the next thing we're going to do is use the rotary function on the neural vise. And I'm going to wrap this chenille up to the front, just like so, by making touching wraps. I'm going to go in around those rubber legs. Weave. This is where the weaving comes into play just a little bit. In there. I'm weaving. As you see, I'm kind of going in between the rubber legs. This one here with the curvature is being a little finicky, but it's okay. Not a problem. This next wrap will put it back in place. Not a big deal. There we go. And this will also help keep it in place as you're actually fishing these. I want to come in front. And here we go. Just like so. Beautiful. Now I'm going to grab, that one's a little off kilter. There we go. Much better. Thank you. Now I'm going to grab my Norvice auto bobbin. I'm going to capture this chenille. And I am holding the whole pack of chenille. That way there's very little waste. You feel free to do it the way you love to, but for me, this is the way to maximize the money and the cost of my materials there, for sure. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna build up a head here momentarily. And this is some fluorescent red, which is almost an orange from Simperfly. And I'm going to do a series of whip finishes before I put some cement or a little bit of thin UV resin on here because this fly is going to get beat up. And just like that, folks, we have completed a rubber leg.
pattern. As you can see, that's going to be a very buggy, buggy fly. It's going to fish well. I'm going to trim these, even these up right here. And there we go. If you want to, you can leave your legs a little long and you can trim them on the water. I tie these from size 10s down to 16s. I do change the bead and color to match the size of the materials and the hooks that I'm actually using that day. Thank you folks for watching and y'all have a great day.